real histor historic day for Israeli sports. Maru Teferi, uh, today a marathon runner in Budapest in the World Championships in Athletic, uh, ran in two hours, nine minutes and 12 seconds, a new Israeli records, and he finished second in the race with a historical silver medal for Israel uh, in the marathon, the fifth medal uh, overall for Israel in uh, World Championships in Athletics, and he's already the vice champion of Europe, now uh, vice champion of the world, and a massive achievement uh, for Israel in, in Athletics as, as part of a general trend of uh, seeing Israel growing in world of sports, football, basketball, now Athletics, it's a, yeah. it's a massive achievement. He started at like number 18 or 16 exactly. and, and, and exactly. ended up number 2. And he ra he, he, he's, ra he's running, uh, his, his run was so uh, diverse because he started slow, then he had a really big drop, but in the end he finished with a great uh, uh, great effort that was, uh, you know, attracted a lot of uh, massive and, and emotional uh, reactions from from uh, athletics and sports fans from all, all over the world. So it's a massive, mass, massive achievement uh, for Marut Eferi and for Israeli athletics. Yeah, great achievement. Uh, but uh, most of the headlines went to the other guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know he lost, he lost, he lost the leadership in the really the final seconds. But you know this is athletics. This is why people right. watch the Olympics. This is why people love the sport. Um, Israeli football yes. also has a very interesting move yes. here. Yes, yes. Uh, in the past, uh, I would say uh, two weeks, but uh, in this weekend it became final and official and confirmed. Daniel Peretz, the goalkeeper of Maccabi Tel Aviv signed five-year contract with Bayern Munich, uh, the eternal uh, German champions, 11 times in a row now, one of the most prestigious and most successful football clubs in the world. Uh, Yaakov, you know, uh, we're speaking here about Israeli football from now and then, and, uh, you know, there was once that uh, a player moved directly from the Israeli league to one of the biggest clubs in the world. It was back in the 70s, Avi Cohen moved uh, to Liverpool in 79. Mm -hmm. But this kind of transfer, directly from Maccabi Tel Aviv to a club such as Bayern Munich, it's probably the biggest uh, transfer for Israeli football ever. Okay, and it's, it is very important to understand that from now on, people in the world, in the, in the world of football, are starting to look different on Israeli footballers as a product. Mm -hmm. Even, even, it, even I would say, I would risk myself and say that it has a, a bigger impact than the third place in the World Cup in Under-20 World Cup mm -hmm. in Argentina or the semi-final in uh, Georgia in the Under-21 Euro Championship. This transfer, also for the player himself, obviously, because he's not coming as a first choice goalkeeper right from the beginning, um, but the drop from Bayern Munich is to this pool. Real Madrid, Manchester United, Liverpool, Dortmund. We are, we are talking about the top of the sport. Plus, from now on, clubs, uh, maybe not A plus level like Bayern Munich, but also A, B minus B, mm -hmm. will start to look on this market of Israeli players and try to find the hidden gems directly from this league. Yeah, without if it's good going for Bayern, to, maybe it's good for us. Uh, right? Exactly. Not through Belgium, not through France, not through Austria, not through directly to the big five leagues. Uh, so it's a very important uh, transfer for Israeli football. And I will also risk myself to say, Moreover, for me, the Eastern football, because there are a lot of hidden gems also mm -hmm. in Jordan, in Egypt, mm -hmm. and the moves directly from these leagues to Europe can change the destiny of football in the region. But let, let's talk about the other move, the other direction. Yes. The, the Saudi Arabia direction. Yes. Uh, yes. Who, who's next? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the past days focused on Mohammed Salah, obviously, uh, that we are hearing that a, a, a locative offer, Yaakov, of $240 million <laughs> for three seasons there, yeah. is on the table for him, yeah. from Ali Tehad Jeddah, one of the biggest clubs in Saudi Arabia, and the most popular club uh, by Mars, yeah, the, a big club, the, the current champions, we talked about them winning the title after many years last season here. Um, so they are really uh, into bringing Mohammed Salah to Saudi Arabia. And by the profile that uh, Saudi Arabia is looking, is, uh, is Salah is good, you know, he's 32, he's been in uh, for, for years, uh, you know, breaking records in Europe. Uh, so why not? Why not, you know, maximizing his uh, financial potential? Yet I think, and also what Jürgen Klopp said today, really 
really when I was on, on my way to the show before the match of Liverpool against Newcastle mm -hmm. while we speak uh, they said that there is no change in Liverpool's stance regarding Mohamed Salah uh, transfer to Saudi Arabia which means they're not going to sell him and plus as I know uh, Jürgen Klopp for many years if there was a deal or there was a talking mm -hmm. around Mohamed Salah there is no way he was starting the game in the lineup uh -huh. so I say yes Saudi Arabia is definitely a destination for Mohamed Salah he's the profile but I'm not sure not, that this summer. Thank you very much Uri a great player uh,